Bonjour à tous. Uh, très heureux d'être ici. Uh, I'm very glad to be here today with uh, Tom Gilman, chairman for uh, Torngut Metals, and uh, John Gallagher, managing director for Cerberus Capital Management. Uh, welcome, Tom and John. And from the outset, thank you for sharing your perspectives on a subject that is not only of news interest, but increasingly crucial to the future of our planet as part of an energy transition aimed at carbon neutrality. This is a topic of uh, interest here in Quebec that we'll discuss about because Quebec has adopted a critical minerals strategy and is aligning itself more broadly with national and North American objectives. Uh, we know that uh, China uh, has a preponderance uh, in the extraction of critical minerals and the global supply chain. So you represent, respectively, Torngat Metals and Cerberus Capital Management. And the Strangely project is well known for its significant deposit of rare metals. And Cerberus Capital Management has injected $50 million US dollars into the project over the last year and a half. I understand significant progress was made since, and obviously this is an excellent news for, for, for Quebec, which is seeking to position itself as a world leader in the supply chain of critical minerals and is constantly seeking to establish a climate of confidence for such strategic investments. So without further delay, I'll ask you the, the first question about, to uh, could you introduce the organizations that you represent so who are they, what are, what are their values and missions, and how did they become involved in the Strange Lake project? Well, thank you, Christiane, and thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for allowing us to come here and tell our story. Um, my role right now is chairman of Torngod Metals, and Torngod is the, basically the largest deposit of heavy rare earth minerals outside of China that sits in land in northern Quebec. Uh, very important for us to, to refine and extract this, this information, this material, because we, we see it as a, a really a proponent for innovation and creativity for the future. Um, I first was presented and introduced to Torngat as an independent businessman. And when I looked at it and uh, saw the potential for it, and particularly the potential as a legacy type of uh, project. By legacy, I mean it withstands the test of time and it withstands the test of politics. So it doesn't matter whether there's a different party in Canada, a different party in Quebec, different party in, in the US, uh, this particular project will basically expand beyond the typical three to five year investment time frame and could be a 30 year project. So tremendous potential, tremendous longevity, legacy, not going to change uh, from, from our objectives. So that's the first part of it. The second part of it is I, I, I went to, uh, when, I, when I was presented to this, uh, the first place I went to was Cerberus Capital Management. John will talk in a minute about Cerberus, but I've had a long 20-year relationship with Cerberus. They are by far the best partner that you can have once they get to a yes on the investment. Now, I also knew that, that Cerberus's due diligence capability was incredible, and they would get to the bottom of whether Torngat was real or whether it wasn't. And through all of their diligence, all of their studying, all of their research, uh, cross-functional uh, specialists from the industry and around the world, uh, aligned with partners from around the world, Cerberus said yes to the investment. At that point in time, the switch flips in Cerberus and they become the best operating partners you could possibly have. In, 20, in 2008, 2009, I was the CEO of a Cerberus portfolio company. And believe me, with the, the meltdown in the, in the financial markets in the U.S., I could not have had a better partner than Cerberus. So this was clear to me that this was where the investment needed to go. Went to Cerberus, and, uh, and here we are today with a $50 million investment. And now a broader scope on what Cerberus would like to do. 
So I'll let John turn, I'll turn it over to John. He can tell you about that. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, you know, uh, Christian, you asked the sort of mission and values question, and there's an answer to that regarding Cerberus, which I'll talk about. But let me just put something out there up front. I'm just going to read the five principles of Quebec's plan for the development of critical strategic mineral value chains. Um, they are, one, align with the strategy and policy objectives. Two, preserve Quebec's economic interests. Three, integrate circular economic principles into the value chain. Four, act in partnership with regional and indigenous communities. And five, foster development conditions that respect the environment and local and indigenous communities. If Cerberus's investment in Torngat was not prepared to uphold these principles, we wouldn't even be sitting here. And that's why, and that's why we're here. I met Tom Gilman when he was the Assistant Secretary of the U.S. Department of Commerce. At the time, this is 2018, I was serving on something called the President's Intelligence Advisory Board. It's the senior most advisory board in the United States. The Cerberus CEO was the chairman of that board, and our job was to map out vulnerabilities in tech, supply chains, and critical minerals for the United States and our allies. And after three years of mapping out some of those strategic vulnerabilities, our job then was to identify which partners can be most important to the United States for solving the problem that we had mapped out. And that put Canada and Quebec at the very top of the list. Not often do you find an opportunity to come together where green energy incentives, supply chain, economic growth, national security, geography, values, and the fact that the United States and Canada can sort of set an example for what a true strategic partnership looks like. It's, it's not often where all of those incentives converge and they did on this investment. Um, and, that is why, and, and that is why we made the investment um, at Cerberus. Um, l l let me just say very briefly and then hand it back over to Christian. We're looking at the Torngat investment, which is mining and creating separated rare earth oxides as an anchor investment for investing more broadly in the value chain. So beyond the separated oxides, Cerberus wants to invest in metal making, alloys, permanent magnets using these rare earths that are essential to the electric vehicle motors in EVs, as well as wind turbines with a whole bunch of other defense applications. So we want to we want to commit to investing across the value chain, primarily in Quebec, and we do believe that this anchor investment will allow us to explore broader investments in Quebec, whether semiconductors, biomanufacturing, quantum, and other things. Thanks. I thank you very much. Um, you both have uh, impressive experience in both government and the, in the business sector. So. Uh, I guess here the fundamental question is, we, we talked about the importance of strengthening the global supply chain in green technologies and particularly in North America, meaning creating a supply chain that is not dependent on the uh, other leading countries such as uh, China on critical minerals. So how do we think we can achieve this? Who wants to start first? That's, that, that, that's the, the question here. Well, it starts with something small and it grows vertically and horizontally. And I think that's the strategy that we have right now. Torngat will be a vertical uh, integration. Uh, we will expand it beyond uh, uh, just, just mining and extraction. We will build a refinery in Canada. And uh, for the first refinery that will be outside of, uh, outside of China, um, we'll also expand our thinking horizontally and uh, into some of those industries that John mentioned before. Uh, but we are acutely aware of everything that is unique about Canada. Um, I spent uh, several years working at TD Bank in Toronto as part of my resume. Uh, I got to love the Canadian people. I, loved, I got to love the cities of, of Canada. And I understand the Canadian people. Uh, I'm learning about the indigenous people and uh, and we have a lot of initiatives going on with them as well. Uh, so I think it's I think it's a comprehensive uh, look at how we start with something small and build it to something that could be really a defensible position for us 
and enhance uh, our strength in, in the world. Um, and unleashing the power and creativity and innovation of our people. Uh, it, it, it's, just, it's daunting to me to think that we would allow uh, the Chinese to uh, control the power of our people's imaginations. But they could if, you know, if they, uh, they became the economic adversary that they project to be. And, um, and that would thwart some of our creativity and some of our innovation. And these materials that we're going to be extracting out of the ground in, in northern, northern Quebec, uh, they're a proponent for this. They're the fuel that gets the innovation going. Let me, let me emphasize the importance of having access to heavy rare earths, light rare earths, neodymium and praseodymium. They're important, and we have extensive quantities of, of those. So, but so do other deposits around the world, Linus and MP materials. Outside of China, as Tom said, nobody really is bringing to market a massive quantity of heavy rare earths, dysprosium and terbium, which we have. If you take MP and Linus together, they're heavy rare earths times 20. This deposit has more. So I, I fully embraced the idea of the importance of secure North American supply chains. But at the very top of the supply chain, you do need the actual materials that um, move downstream and create the technologies in that circular uh, loop that we've talked about. Um, secure and resilient supply chains is nothing short of the center of gravity of modern national and economic security, period. And what I see on the Canada-Quebec side of the border, I see integration across innovation, industry, and policymakers, like three gears coming together. And I think it's, it's getting better and it's moving faster. And I see those things also on the U.S. side of the border. What I really want to see is I want to see innovation, industry, and policymakers on both sides of the border coming together like two gears, recognizing that we're solving an economic, a strategic, and a problem for the entire continent that will set an example for what can be done when two nations work closely together. That's very interesting. So, Tom, you talked about um, starting small with um, with the uh, local communities, and then after that, we know that we can go big in terms of a supply chain in North America. So that brings me to uh, um, uh, the question about: uh, Do you have any specific to add on the um, your perspectives on the IESGs? and uh, the relation that uh, you uh, you intend to have with the local communities, indigenous communities. So this is imperative to understand uh, when doing business in Quebec and doing business in Canada. Um, we are dealing with six different indigenous groups in the territory that we're in. Uh, we have total respect and honor their, their lifestyle. Uh, we're working with them. We're engaged with them all the time. We've actually even organized our corporation to have a VP of, of uh, indigenous um, activities uh, that reports to a C-suite member. Um, I am involved with meeting with the indigenous people. Uh, I will be having dinner with, with one of the groups on uh, this Thursday night. Um, so it is, it is incredibly important to us that we understand this, we respect them, we are on their lands, we understand that, and we are in their environment, and we have to be respectful of that. So we've got a lot of activity going on with them. We've started right from the start. When we first started this investment, we started having conversations with them. And uh, they've been very fruitful, and uh, we have a, we, so far we have a very good relationship. We hope to do more with them. Uh, for us, it's about legitimacy, and uh, only through true partnership with these groups can we can we present something that represents a shared vision and shared objectives. And so that comes through dialogue and and trust building. And I and I do wanna uh, I do wanna highlight the work of the management team uh, at Torngat for seeing this early and investing in it. And again, that's another reason Cerberus felt comfortable making the investment because we saw how seriously this management team took this issue. 
very interesting uh, the, the, this approach about building this all together being inclusive so there is another part of the uh, equation i'd like to cover um, uh, about the fact that is there any issues that uh, you're concerned about and that you'd like to see the authorities uh, to address uh, with you or, or uh, what are your perspectives on that I'll start off. I have two things uh, to share on this. One, um, it's really important to accelerate some of the projects that are worthy. They are addressing an important economic strategic issue. They have the right leadership. They have the right partnerships. Uh, I'm in a lot of discussions with uh, Quebec leaders and, and Canada leadership. And everyone has this same sort of sense that we need to accelerate these projects and bring them to market. But we argue you can't accelerate everything at once. You have to prioritize the ones that are ready and the most important projects. And so a little bit tongue in cheek, we've sort of introduced the golden buzzer concept for anybody who's watching America's Got Talent uh, at night. Um, some of the acts get the golden buzzer if you've seen this and it's they get to move forward quickly. Uh, and we've seen some, um, we, we've gotten a lot of resonance on this idea that as we've been told by certain ministers, uh, prioritizing certain projects and accelerating them will send a signal of what success looks like and it will create momentum. And so we're doing our best to position this Torn Cat Strange Lake investment as worthy of the, the golden buzzer. The other piece I, I'd like to mention, I know Tom will have comments on this. Everything we're talking about is important, but how viable is it really if we don't protect price? If pricing on rare earths is manipulated and there's downward pressure, it's going to dissuade these projects from coming to market. We, we know how this works. And so we very much want to advocate with US policymakers and uh, Canadian and Quebec policymakers that whatever measures are possible to put in place to help protect price, that we come together and do that. Some venues or mechanisms include ETTF, the Energy Transition Task Force. Canada will be in a leading role uh, at the G7 in 2025. I think this could be an important issue. And there are just many other things like um, investment programs, tax credits, uh, government offtake, stockpiling, anti-dumping, friend shoring. And finally, last thing I'll say on this is there was a select committee on um, competition with the CCP in the U.S. House of Representatives led by a, a representative, uh, Mike Gallagher, no relation. And they put out a document uh, called, um, it's basically a strategy. And in the document, they advocate for something called a resilient resource reserve. And it's essentially this idea that there needs to be a floor on pricing. And if price dips below a certain floor, that the government will kick in funding so that these mining uh, efforts don't don't fall away. And if the price goes above a certain ceiling, that these projects will kick in revenue uh, into the program. And so we think that's something um, worth looking into. But uh, last word over to Tom, sir. Thank you. So I think the most important thing, if you take the 50,000 mile view, um, anything we can do to strengthen the US and Canada relationship, I think is well worth it. It's a, it's a noble cause. We need to do that. Um, our two countries are, are so similar and, and um, alike in so many ways. Uh, our values are, are similar. We may get off track every once in a while, but we're, we're pretty well aligned. So that, that relationship is paramount, and this particular investment allows us to do that. Um, we want to integrate our portfolio companies into, this, into the culture of, of Canada, and that culture means the local culture, which is the indigenous people, the provincial culture, which is Quebec, and and also across Canada, uh, we'll be looking at investments at Cerberus that that cross all of those different uh, groups. Um, what John said about pricing is paramount. I mean, it, it doesn't take very much in in the uh, investment banking world to dissuade people once price drops and the returns aren't there anymore. Even just penciling it out. And so that's what we're trying to pre to prevent with uh, with some of the pricing policies that we're advocating, and and we've had a lot of success with uh, with the Canadian officials to uh, uh, 
to give us a, a, a gentle ear on that and listen to our, our concerns. We're working the other side of the border as well. So I think those are, those are the key things that um, uh, we'd like to leave you with. The one other thing I'd like to say, though, is from our perspective, and this is Cerberus and Torngott and Torngott's management team. John used the golden buzzer. I'm going to try to one-up him here. Uh, Torngott is our Taylor Swift. Okay, what we're trying to do is we're trying to gather as many people in the stadium to listen to our song. And we're trying to, we're trying to encourage them to watch our performance and to enjoy the ride with us. And uh, if we do that, um, this is going to be a really great investment, a benefit for the local people, a benefit for Quebec in particular, and a benefit for Canada and the U.S. And if I can just jump in and say, um, we've got, take a minute after the panel, look at this uh, diagram here. It identifies all the uses of rare earths. So if you, just when you thought rare earths couldn't be as popular as Taylor Swift, Take a look at the many uses, and I believe in there is a Fender Stratocaster guitar for one of the rare earths. So it all comes together in the end. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. Uh, we, we are on time and we could cover a lot. And uh, talking about Taylor Swift, of course, it gets some uh, excitement. But um, joke apart, I thank you very much for your uh, generous comments. And uh, we'll uh, watch your progress very closely. And uh, all the best for you. Very good project. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.